Hi, this is Dan Heisman, and we're going to have another video here on YouTube to help you improve your chess game. Today we're going to try to solve a composition problem together. Uh, this is a problem from Cyrus Lakdawalla's book, Tactical Training in the Endgame, where he gives what we would consider pretty difficult endgame compositions. And in the introduction he says, you don't need to try to solve them, just try some stuff and then look at the solution and see what you can learn. Well, as a stronger player, I'm going to actually try to solve it. I don't know if I'll be able to do it. I assure you I have not given it to the engine. I haven't looked at the answer. Uh, I did spend a, a minute or two looking at the problem before we started the video. So I have some ideas, but I really don't know what the answer is. I have some ideas of what I want to try. Okay, so let's see what the problem is. The problem is that white can't stop the black pawn from queening. And the question is, is it enough to be up a piece? So when you have a problem like this, the first thing you want to do is just try to play it normally as if you're playing the most natural moves. And we know from the start, since it's a hard problem, that doing that won't solve the problem. But you want to try it anyway just to see what would happen. So in this case, probably the most obvious thing to do is to move your bishop and get a queen one move later after black gets his queen. So let's do that. We can move the bishop anywhere, but let's we want to move it so it's still guarding the pawn on d5. And if we're going to push the pawn to f7, that wouldn't be g8. So the most natural first move, if you were playing a game, and this was a speed game, the move that you would look at is bishop to e6. All right, now clearly black would push the pawn to get a queen, and clearly white would try to do the same. So let's do this and see why white's not winning. After all, you'd say, hey, white's up. A bishop he should be winning here the problem is the queen is on the edge of the board and black has a whole bunch of possibilities for checking here let's see if we can set up some sort of check that would occur let's see could we even trade off the last pawns and get a draw let's see can we trade Queens and then trade the pawns that's a good question um, I'm not sure. Let's try it. All right, so let's say we start with queen to g2 check, and then king f7, and then queen f3 check, and let's say he plays king e8. Now, we don't have to trade queens here. We could just keep checking, but let's say we trade queens. Can we get a draw here? For instance, can black play either c6 or c5? Let's try c6 to trade the pawns. Pawn takes. Well, first of all, black's threatening to take the pawn. So if he takes the pawn, it's going to be a draw no matter what. So white can't push past, so he has to take. And now black takes the bishop, and black goes after the pawn. If the king moves over, the king moves over, and white can't save the pawn. And if the pawn pushes, then king d7, and he still can't save the pawn. So that seems to be the problem. Let's go back and show that again. Bishop here, pawn up, f7, h1, queen, queen, and now we start checking. Well, white doesn't have to go this way. He could go this way. And, you know, that, that gives him chances, too. Uh, let's try going in a different direction. Let's say he plays king h7. Well, now we could keep checking with the queen, and again, this is the problem. If he ever puts the queen in the way, we do the exact same thing we did before. Queen takes, king takes, and push the pawn here with a draw, because pawn takes, king takes bishop, and what else can white do? He can't do anything. Every other move, if he pushes the pawn, we can always take the pawn, and he can't checkmate us with a bishop. All right, so bishop e6, pawn here, pawn here, pawn here, queen, pawn here, queen, queen checks. Where can the king go? King to, let's say, this square. Queen checks, king over to this square. I'm trying to put the bishop in the way now. Um... I can always check, keep checking with the queen like this, and the bishop can't go in the way. And again, if he ever puts the queen in the way, we just trade the queens. 
So I think you're probably getting the idea. We don't want to spend too much of the video explaining to you why this position is not a win, but it's sufficient to show you that if white trades queens, he can't hold on to the pawn and therefore it's going to be a draw. Okay, so now we really know what the problem is. The problem is if we play it normally like a normal position, we can't win, so we need something clever. All right, so what could we possibly do? Well, one of the things we could possibly do is we can push the pawn to d6 and clear out this diagonal so the bishop can try to get there. Okay, so for instance, let's look at pushing the pawn. Now, black has three things he can do. He can take with the king, he can take with the pawn, or he can ignore him and keep pushing the pawn. So we got to try all three. And that's not going to be easy, but we got to pick them one at a time. Let's try taking with the pawn first. All right, so let's say he takes with the pawn, and now we play bishop here. Why are we doing that? Well, we're trying to lure the black king to the diagonal so we can get a skewer at the end when we both get queens. And otherwise, if he doesn't take the bishop, then I'm guarding the h1 square. This is sort of the same idea. If you saw the movie Searching for Bobby Fischer, and you saw the final combination there where, you know, Josh Waitzkin puts his opponent's king on the diagonal and then he queens second, but he gets the queen with check and win the other queen, then this is sort of the same idea. Not quite, but, but similar. All right, so bishop to d5. Normally, a beginner would say, I don't want to play bishop d5. He'll just take my bishop. Well, if you stop there, that would be a quiescence error. So bishop here. Well, clearly now... If black doesn't take the bishop, he's going to lose. Because if he pushes the pawn, white will just put the bishop in the way. Black will push his pawn. White will push his pawn. Black pushes. White pushes queen. Black does something. Who cares? Here. Queen comes down here. If you don't believe this is an easy win, the king can't even go there or there to get closer. Can't even go here. King actually has to go further away. We could check him and pick up the pawn, pick up the other pawn, easy win. All right, so let's go back. So pawn here, we're looking at first at the pawn takes variation. Bishop here, and now the main line is he takes the bishop, we push the pawn, and now he could take a tempo to move the king out of the way, but then we get a queen and we stop his pawn from queening. So he would try to queen, white would queen, and now if black gets any kind of promotion, to then queen to a8 check, voila, King moves out of the way, queen takes, easy win. Okay, so does that prove that pawn takes pawn loses? Well, I think so. Pawn takes pawn, bishop here. He has to take the bishop. Otherwise, white will just get a queen and win. Takes the bishop, white goes here. He can move out of the way now. But now that gives white a tempo when he gets a queen. And then when black tries to push the pawn, white just puts the queen behind it and picks it off and then wins easily. All right, so I think we're starting to see that after pawn up, pawn takes pawn loses, but we haven't proven a lot. All we've proven is that he can't take with the pawn. Well, what if happens if he takes with the king? Let's say he takes with the king, but now his king is on a checking square. So can we just move the bishop out of the way and queen with check and maybe win. Well, it depends on where we put our bishop. We have to be very careful here to make sure we have the right square. It could be uh, any square. It could be g8, it could be e8, it could be, um, you know, a2 for that matter. So let's try some and see what we can do. Let's try g8 to begin with. Bishop g8. He pushes his pawn, we push our pawn. If he moves the king, we move our king, and I don't think that helps him, because when he queens, we queen with check, although that may not be winning. We'd have to look at that, too. Let's see what happens if he just gets a queen. So he gets a queen, white gets a queen with check, and now, if he goes to the, to the long diagonal, we still have that skewer. If he goes to e5, we have queen check here, and he has to go to the long diagonal, and we have... But if he goes here, we don't have a skewer... Oh, we can't go there. He has to go here, and then we have a skewer square. Okay. But the problem is that what happens if he goes, like, here? 
I'm not sure why it has a check that's going to do it now. Can he check with the bishop? Like that? If king here, then queen check wins. And if king takes, can I play check? No, because I think he goes here. And now when I check, he goes here and there's no skewer. All right, so what I think we need to do is maybe put the bishop on this square after king takes. All right, so pawn here, pawn here, and now we're looking at the line where he gets a queen and we get a queen with check. All right, so he can't go there, he can't go there. If he goes king here, we play skewer number one and then we play skewer number two. Very cute. If you miss these kind of things because you think, oh, Bishop there doesn't work because he just takes the bishop. Again, that's a quiescence error. Quiescence errors are a big difference between stronger players and weaker players. When I see a position like this, I don't just say bishop c6 is no good. I say, if I play bishop c6 and he takes it, does that do anything? And the answer is yes, it does. But that means he can't go to that square. But if he goes here, I have this check. And now he's got to go to the white diagonal and I win the queen. All right, so we're getting somewhere. Pawn up, king takes, bishop here. If he pushes the pawn and I push the pawn and he pushes it again, and I push it queen. If he goes here, I play bishop checks and queen checks. If he goes here, I play queen checks. And he has to go to the diagonal and I win the queen. All right, so does that prove that king takes loses? No, because we haven't looked at the king here line. We always have to look at all the branches of the line. So here we go. So bishop here, pawn here, sorry, bishop here, pawn here, pawn here. So we see that getting a queen loses, but how about king over here? All right, well, let's try it again. King here, pawn up queen, pawn up queen, and now, if he goes to d8, I have bishop check winning the queen, so he has to play here. And here we go again, I play queen check, and he has to play here, and I win the queen. Okay, so now I think we're getting there. Now I think we realize after pawn here, king takes, pawn, sorry, bishop here, pawn here, pawn here, if king here, king here, Pawn queens, pawn queens, can't go there because of the check, here, check, can't go there, got to go here, check, and wins the queen. Okay, so now we've shown that pawn takes loses to bishop here, and we've shown that king takes loses to bishop here. Now we got to prove that after pawn here, if he pushes the pawn, we can win. If we can, if we can do that, then we've got it. Well, white has lots of moves here. He could play pawn takes or he could push. All right, so let's see here. Which one do we want to do? I mean, we might have enough material now to win the game if we, if we both get a queen. For instance, it could be that just pawn here, pawn queens, pawn queens, queen check, and now he just can't trade queens anymore. The problem is, if I move my king away from this pawn, he might be able to play king takes pawn with a draw. So it's not quite that easy. Let's go back, pawn up, h2. So now we have a bunch of moves, and we could still play bishop here. I'm not sure that that helps us, though, in this position. Maybe it does. Let's take a look. Bishop here. He has to take. We can go here. When he goes here, we can queen with check. And when he goes here, we're probably winning with just f7 here, because when he starts checking with the queen, I can check here. Or if he checks with the queen here, I can run back and... So I, I think this, this line is winning, but, but that doesn't prove it right away. So pawn here, pawn here, 
bishop here, king takes. Um, if I take the pawn first, and he queens, and then I queen, it's not with check. <clears throat> Let's, let's look at the queen with check again and see if we can really do something more pertinent here. All right, so if he stays on the diagonal, I, do, I get the skewer again. So we can't do that. So where is he going to go? If he goes king to e6, I can play queen checks. And then take the pawn, which is probably winning. I want something that's more decisive, but I, I looks like I'm winning here. Um, let's do this again. So I'm wondering whether I have to play bishop here and give up the bishop. I mean, I can just get a queen here. But he'll win that pawn. But suppose I get a queen and I guard that pawn. Suppose I just push the pawn. He pushes the pawn. I push and get a queen. He checks, let's say, I don't know, here. And I go here. If he keeps checking and I play bishop here, I think this is a pretty easy win. I'm up a bishop and my pawn's more advanced. If he now checks me over here, I go here and I guard the pawn and he can't take it. This looks like a trivial win, really. Um, so pawn here, pawn here. So I've got three moves. Pawn takes pawn, pawn up, and bishop here. Usually in a problem, you can't win with all of those. But right now, it's looking pretty good in the lines where I get a queen with check or I just, you know, I just looked this line here where my queen is guarding the pawn. H1, D8, queen. This has got to be a winning position. I'm up a whole bishop and my queen is guarding that pawn on f6. And I'm threatening to check his king away and I'm threatening to take the pawn with check. That's an awful lot of threats. This looks like an easy win to me. Um, I'm, am I missing something? There's no stalemate. Is there a stalemate? King can always go here or here. I don't see that black can sacrifice his queen and get a stalemate or anything. Um, just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. You want to cover all your bases when you're doing these kind of puzzles. All right, so pawn here, pawn here. All right, we've already done all those pretty lines. It's possible this last line is just not as pretty. I think pushing the pawn just wins. Let's let me look again at one of the at some of those other lines here. Let's look at bishop here again. He has to take the bishop. I push the pawn, he pushes it and gets a queen. I get a queen with check. And I think he can go king e6. He could also play king, well if he plays king c5, queen takes pawn check should be a pretty easy win with his king far away. But if he plays here, I think I can do the same thing. I'm pretty sure queen checks king here. Now there's no skewer now. But I can just take the pawn, and this has got to be a win. You know, if he checks me, if he checks me here, I can play here and then zigzag my king up, keep his king away. If he checks me queen e4, I can play here. And now if he checks me here, I can go here. If he checks me here, is this a draw? I don't think it's a draw, but it's not... A trivial win. I could push my king here, but then he checks me on h8, so that's awkward. King here. How about king here? Queen checks here. Checks. Is this might be an immediate draw? I think this is a draw now. King here. Queen checks. If queen here, check. King here check. I think this is a draw. All right, so so I'm not liking bishop here as much. I'm kind of liking pawn here. He has nothing better than getting a queen. 
I get a queen. He checks me. I go here. If he checks me here, I go here. If he checks me here, I go here. If we go back two moves, if he checks me right away here, I go here. He checks me here, I go here. This looks awfully, awfully, awfully bad for black. See, this is the same kind of position we just got into, but black, white has an extra bishop. That makes all the difference in the world. I gotta believe this is a fairly easy win. I don't. I think the key lines were all those cute skewer lines that we did before. All right, so let's look in the book now and see if I have the right answer. So my answer is pawn here, and if he takes with the pawn, I'm gonna play bishop here. And if he takes with the king, I'm gonna play bishop here. And if he doesn't take it all, then I think I'm just going to push that pawn in and get a queen on d8 and guard this pawn. I don't think I need to take this pawn. I think taking this pawn is actually harder. I think it's better to play here, although it's possible that pawn takes wins too. All right, so that's my answer. Let's look in the book here. I'm going to get out Tactical Training in the Endgame by Cyrus Lakdawalla. All right, White wins a level four problem. He says, the brothers Platov created many beautiful endgame studies. This is, what, this is elegant. Both sides can promote. If we go for that plan, black promotes first, and we either lose our deep pawn or black delivers perpetual check. My instinct said the combination comes from a skewer along the H1, A8 diagonal. Okay, answer, D6 exclamation point. Yay! Other moves fail. King takes D6. All right, or... C takes d6 is met with bishop takes d5 exclamation point. All right. All right, so now the key, the line is what if h2, he gives d7 exclamation point. All right. And we cover our precious f6 pawn if we promote on d8 rather than c8. He gives h1 queen, d8 queen, queen g2 check, king h7, queen h3 check. King g7, queen g4, check, bishop g6, just like I did. And checks her at an end and white wins. All right. All right, so he says the main line is therefore king takes, and now he gives my move. I, we tried bishop g8 first. It didn't work. Bishop e8 was my second try. He gives bishop e8 exclamation point. He says by moving the bishop to e8, we serve two functions. We clear the way to promote on f8 with check. By transferring e8, we set up future skewers h2, f7. Now here he doesn't even look at king e7. He really should because it is a different line. We did that too when we were doing this. We proved that king e7 didn't work. He just gives h1 queen in the book. He should give both lines. h1 queen, f8, queen check, king d5. Here comes the double skewer, bishop c6 check, king takes c6, Queen a8 check, king d6, queen takes h1, and white wins. All right, Dan, you solved it. All right, so that's how you solve a tough problem. Notice there was a lot of chances for quiescence errors. Quiescence errors are where you look at something that's not safe and you say, I can't do that. Instead of saying, if I do something that's not safe, is it worthwhile to investigate that further? Does it really do anything? If it does something, it might be worth investigating it further. It doesn't mean it's a good move. It just means you need to look at it more and look deeper and not make a quiescence error. Good players always ask themselves, if I make this sacrifice, can I do something more? If the answer is no, then they don't do it. If the answer is yes, they investigate it further. If the further investigation shows it doesn't work, then they don't do it. If the further investigation shows it does work, then they didn't make a quiescence error. That's a very, very big issue in learning to become a good player. Okay, so hopefully the way I solve this problem today will help you solve chess problems as well. And as always, when you get to end games, you want to take your time and play very slowly and carefully. It would have been even harder if I had to visualize all the answers. But of course, to show the video to you for a hard problem like this, I did move the pieces around. A lot of my videos where it's easier, I ask you to just visualize the answers. But in this one where it's harder, that would be asking a little bit too much. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit the like button or you could subscribe. But the best thing you can do is tell your friends about the channel, Dan Heisman Chess. 
I really, really appreciate it if you tell your friends about the channel. I think it's really good. We cover almost all the improvement ideas. You can use my uh, playlist to get things like end games or think out loud games or uh, master games or amateur games, whatever you want. Look at the playlist. We have a playlist for basic material as well. Okay, we will see you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye.